The story of Deadwood is a narrative marked by ambition, avarice, and survival, as prospectors and fortune seekers swarmed the region in pursuit of Black Hills gold during the gold rush. The Black Hills, situated in what is now South Dakota and Wyoming, held profound spiritual significance for the Lakota Sioux people for centuries. Revered as Pahasapa, these hills were integral to their culture and traditions. The Lakota regarded the hills as a sacred gift from the Great Spirit and staunchly resisted the encroachment of outsiders. The Black Hills Gold Rush commenced in 1874 when Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer led a contingent of over 1,000 men from Fort Abraham Lincoln in the Dakota Territory, present-day Bismarck, North Dakota, to the Black Hills. While rumors of gold had circulated for some time, the Treaty of Fort Laramie had granted the Sioux Indians ownership of their sacred land, thereby hindering earlier exploration efforts in the area. Custer and his 7th Cavalry were tasked with locating a suitable site for an army fort and investigating the region's natural resources to verify the rumors. Their investigations bore fruit. Gold was indeed discovered in French Creek, just outside the town that would later bear Custer's name. This discovery prompted a dispatch announcing the find and proclaiming, there is no doubt as to the existence of various metals throughout the hills. Examinations at numerous points confirm and strengthen the fact of the existence of gold in the Black Hills. The news was relayed by a courier to Fort Laramie, Wyoming, and telegraphed to the press. In an instant, the Black Hills gold rush was set in motion. Despite the treaty that prohibited white settlement, eager prospectors flocked to the southern hills in search of riches. Initial disappointments led them to explore the northern hills, and their luck changed when they discovered significant amounts of gold in Deadwood Gulch. This canyon earned its name from the abundance of dead trees scattered throughout it. The gold found here was placer gold, loose particles mixed with rocks and dirt in Deadwood and Whitewood Creeks. Recognizing that placer gold must have a source, prospectors turned their attention to the quartz and rock formations surrounding the mining camps. On April 9, 1876, brothers Fred and Moses Manuel, along with Hank Harney and Alex Eng, stumbled upon a substantial vein of gold-bearing ore near what is now Lead, South Dakota. This discovery turned out to be the mother lode deposit that had been feeding the placer gold in the creeks. They claimed this find and named it the Homestake Mine. The following year, they sold it to a group of out-of-state investors, including George Hurst, for $70,000. Little did they know that their discovery would become the most significant gold vein in American history, supplying 10% of the world's gold production over the next 125 years and yielding over 40 million ounces of gold valued at more than $1 billion. Other prospectors held hope of uncovering the next homestake, but that mine proved to be one of a kind. Its gold was free milling, meaning that the quartz needed only to be crushed to release the precious metal. In contrast, most of the other gold in the region was chemically bound to the rock, making extraction difficult and costly. By 1880, the richest placer deposits had been depleted, and attention shifted to hard rock mining. Few of these operations proved profitable, and most closed quickly. Compounding the difficulties was the government fixed price of $20.67 per ounce of gold, a value that remained unchanged for years, even as the costs of labor and supplies escalated. Only the mighty Homestake mine survived and thrived, eventually ceasing operations in 2002 due to rising production costs. The Black Hills Gold Rush was a time of excitement and high hopes. It enriched a select few individuals, but the majority left with little to show for their strenuous efforts. The spirit of this era endures to this day. You can still occasionally spot someone panning for small specks of gold in the streams, inspired by the same fever that drove thousands of men to the Black Hills more than a century ago.